please give a warm Kinsale welcome to Marina Cassidy and Emmett O'Connor. And uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you all for taking the time to be here this afternoon. 
Uh, for me personally, it's a great privilege um, to be back in Kinsale, uh, part of Kinsale Arts Festival again this year. But what's very exciting for me, I've been here before, you know, presenting the programmes on the history of the Irish harp. But in the past year, um, one of the best things uh, about COVID for me was uh, meeting Emmett O'Connor and uh, get him to do this collaboration. So um, it's been so wonderful to take these wonderful ancient harp tunes and he has just given them a whole new injection uh, of uh, contemporary feel, um, a jazz feel. So it's a great privilege to work with a musician like Emmett. there um, with a piece called Carolyn's Dream and of course that was from the um, the wonderfully prolific uh, 17th century Irish harper Perlock Carolyn um, but for the next one uh, we're going to go right back to the beginning of the era um, of that very rich harping tradition in Ireland um, this one I'm sure you will recognize it's a march called Brian Baru's March and of course it was composed in honour of the great High King of Ireland, Brian Baru, who died at the Battle of Clontarf in 1014. The tune is a bit older than that, but Brian Baru was a great patron of the harpers, so it's named in his honour. And of course the oldest harp to be found in Ireland is known as the Brian Baru's harp, which is kept at Trinity College in Dublin. So this is our take on Brian Baru's march.
sorry, slight technical malfunction. Give us one second. I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> So just while um, Des is uh, sorting that out, um, moving on, uh, I was now I'd like to sing my first song, and again keeping everything related uh, to the harp and the harp story. Um, this is a lovely old Irish song called Casa on Tulgon. Um, again, it may be familiar to you because it was used uh, recently in the lovely film called Brooklyn. Irla O'Linard um, sang a version of this. But it is a story associated with, with harping, um, quite a humorous one, really. Casa on Tugon means sp spinning the hay rope. And um, so it's the story of a traveling harper, as they were known as itinerant harpers. This would have been around 17th century when they no longer enjoyed the privilege of um, full-time positions uh, when the Gaelic order had broken down. So this is the story of a traveling harper who fell in love with the daughter of a particular household, but her mother wasn't one bit impressed and did not think he was in any way suitable. So uh, she devised a plan to get rid of the harper, and so she asked him to help her to spin the hay rope to cost him to gone. Uh, but she cleverly positioned him with his back to the door. So of course, as the rope was getting longer, he didn't realize he was reversing out the door. And um, the story is that when she had him on the other side, she passed his harp through the window and told him not to come back there again. So, um, are you okay? Oh, good. <laughs> I had it all scripted. <laughs> I'll be singing this in Irish, um, Casa on Tulgon. Oh, 
much. Um, so that was a mazurka called the Mid-Eastern Mazurka, so uh, an Eastern influence in that one. Um, <clears throat> moving on now, I have to say this is one of the favourite songs I've learned recently, um, probably because of the quality of the lyrics, because this is a setting of the uh, William Butler Yeats poem, The Stolen Child, 
and uh, it's a musical setting by the Canadian harpist and singer Lorena McKennett. So this is Yeats' The Stolen Child. <coughs>
10 instruments at the same time, he can sing as well. So. <laughs> um, okay, just a few more to go. Um, back to the music now of Perlick Carolyn, the great Irish harper, who was also known as the blind harper Carolyn, um, because it seems smallpox was a very common disease at that time. Um, and I always think that that adds so much to their wonderful sense of skill, you know, that they were totally dependent on their sense of touch to play the instrument. And Carolyn was uh, unique, really, in that his ability to compose um, probably exceeded his playing. And um, so he spent much of his life, too, traveling around, playing in the great Irish houses. And most of the tunes he composed were for his patrons. So this is one of those. Um, this is called George Brabazon, and um, he wrote a couple of tunes for him. So this is the second of the um, <coughs> George Brabazon tunes by Thurla Carolyn. language. Um, I think this song, uh, its strength really is in its simplicity and its very haunting quality. Um, again, a song an air associated with the Harpers. Uh, I think I probably learned this song when I was about 12, so that's a long time ago. Um, so I hope I can remember it. But um, yeah, it's a beautiful song called On Restu Egangarig, No An Vakatu Fein McGraw. Were you at the rock, and did you see my loved one there?
so much again for taking the time to be here and um, I'm sure you won't mind if I say a special thank you to a very special lady sitting down there, my great friend, Anna McGuire. Mm -hmm. Anytime I felt like, uh, I won't say I ever felt like giving up music, but anytime I maybe wasn't as energetic as I could be, Anna was my source, <laughs> so uh, thank you. So we will leave you um, as we began with a, a carol and piece. Um, this is an upbeat one, it's, it's a planksty, and of course a planksty was a term for the dance tunes. Um, there's, I suppose, three lovely things associated with the Irish harp, you know, it was known for having the qualities of the gold three, which was for the laments, of the soon three, for the lullabies and then the gyan three for the merrymaking so this one would certainly fit into the um the gyan three ca um, category another one for a patron so we will leave you with planks to drew and thank you emmet so much
Please give it up for Marina Cassidy and Emily Carroll. into the whole area of music therapy and using music in hospitals and um, I was uh, doing a placement in a day centre for people with acquired brain injury and I had a, I suppose, a very strong sense of how time had a whole new meaning for people when they've had a, an acquired brain injury and I was always researching some songs and I came across this song um, called Who Knows Where the Time Goes? Um, remember it was sung by Sandy Denny. Sandy Denny I'm sorry it didn't come to me so I suppose in light of COVID and everything um, it's it's appropriate so okay. in E flat please Emma <laughs>
Thank you.